nothing can possibly go wrong. We're just uh, we're we're just pausing for a moment as the internet's spool up. Um, but hello, I think we should be live now. Hello, Yay. everyone. What welcome, up? welcome to Awesome Hardware. Uh, this is a show about technology, uh, and indeed, that's we're gonna t that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, we're gonna talk about some tech news. We're gonna talk about some some science based stuff, uh, and. The first thing that I should tell you guys is that you should not have high expectations for my half of this show. No, indeed. I want to set the bar as low, low bar. as low as possible. Under promise, over deliver. I like the way you think, Paul. For one, Awesome Hardware is a show that we do every Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, uh, and we split it into two halves. And the first half of uh, today's show, which is episode number 132, has already been live streamed to Kyle's channel, Bitwit, and the link to that is in the video's description. So we've already been uh, talking about technology and drinking beer and having uh, just just a wonderful time. A gay old time. Uh, exactly. And now I'm going to be talking about stuff, but Woo. I begin with a harrowing tale of uh, frantic attempting to get ready for the show <laughs> several hours ago. At which point, uh, I was diligently allowing the streaming computer to do Windows updates as well as XSplit updates. At which point, it decided simultaneously. I did well. I did one then the other because like mm. every, it's got to be up to date. Sure. Um, and XSplit decided to stop t getting the the feed from the camera, the, the black magic. It, anyway, there was a bunch. Of, there was a big mess, and I had to kind of go through and try to figure things out. And I ended up. Capturing with a completely... I'm using the Ripsaw today. Yeah, Razor Ripsaw. Razor Ripsaw. For this, the win. This is where our video signal is coming to you guys from today. It, it looks great. As you can see, the green light indicating that the, the, the uh, driver is properly loaded and everything. Mm -hmm. Point being, that ate up all my time for my proper research and note-taking as I usually do. So, although I do have the, a news segment, an AI segment, and a Tales from Space segment that we're going to be going over today... Uh, some of the depth of detail uh, might be missing there, so we'll be reading some of that stuff along with you guys. Totally cool. All that said, if you're not impressed already with our live show, uh, maybe <laughs> invest some money in it. Uh, Paulshardware.net is where you can go to to buy stuff from my store. I got some keycaps, I got some bottle openers, I got some shirts. Uh, we got awesome hardware shirts now, as well as a new 15-ounce mug. Uh, I'm having a sale right now. December discounts. If you spend over fifty dollars, you get ten uh, percent off. Over a hundred dollars, you get twenty percent off. Uh, so check it out. Buy some stuff. It's all real high quality. And thank you guys for your support. Who do? Uh, Bitwit.tech/store is Kyle's store. Very similar situation to me. Buy stuff. It's all good. Uh, good stuff. Yep. Shirts. Uh, these these twenty these ounce tall boy twenty ounce glasses. tall boy imperial pint glasses are fantastic. Even fidget Lots spinners. Of Fidget spinners. If you're on the tail end of that oh, yeah. trend. Uh, but yeah, if you guys buy stuff gonna... during the show, we'll give you a quick shout out at the end of the show. And when it comes to my half of the show, we're going to try to, to kind of plow through this as quickly as we possibly can. Let's do it. Uh, all right, let's start off with news. And the big news, 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 news. depends. News, news. This news depends. It, it, like, it's either really big news or it's like I've already heard this news. It depends on how or both. closely uh, you followed what AMD said over the past year about their uh, Zen stuff. This is a Tech Power Up article, by the way. Uh, whether you believe them... And whether you find further confirmation to be significant or not, uh, there has apparently been some further confirmation. Uh, this was an AMD b interview with Overclockers UK that has uh, stated very specifically that the second generation Ryzen desktop processors will support the existing AM4 socket. Now, AMD has kind of already said this before. They've said AM4 is going to stick around. Mm -hmm. uh, AM4 is going to be our socket until 2020. That's the year that they listed there. Now, which is awesome. There is the possibility that they could have been just like blowing smoke up everyone's ass, and actually, what they wanted to do was keep doing like you know Ryzen one stuff on AM4. But when they come right. out with their next gen, they're going to come out with a new platform or something like that. Right, right. That was a possibility. So, sure. if you're looking at it that way, this maybe is a little bit further confirmation that anyone who's investing in an AM4 socket motherboard 
has a reasonable expectation that uh, they're going to have uh, some more processors that will uh, slot into that and be supported. That'll be current gen. Yeah. Next generation is called Pinnacle Ridge uh, by the code name. That is going to be Zen 2 or second generation Ryzen or Ryzen Gen 2 or whatever. Uh, I don't think there's actually any official name for it yet. Um, but if you have an AM4 motherboard, uh, you would need a BIOS update. Uh, you need to update for the latest Ageza 1.007 version. Uh, and the AMD rep, James Pryor, confirmed in the, in the interview that AM4 will work. So that's pretty cool. Also, there's potential that they're going to be uh, shrinking down to a 12 nanometer process, uh, down from 14 for Ryzen 2, which would enable higher clock speeds. Sweet. So that's uh, pretty good, too. Um, and I think this is a really good tactic for AMD to take when they're competing with Intel, because that's been something that Intel gets critiqued about a lot is their uh, turnover in platforms or something and, and that kind of thing. Granted, the mainstream platform, at least if you go back to uh, LGA 11, what was it, 1150, uh, the stuff prior to, to, to Sandy Bridge was the last time they did a one gear platform. Um, but the Z370 stuff, a lot of people are critiquing that isn't backwards compatible with Kaby Lake and, and, and Skylake, so yeah. um, there you go there. But yeah, uh, good to know. Uh, there is the chance, however, that AMD might come out with a new chipset. So a new chipset. Still an AM4. Beyond, still AM4 socket, mm -hmm. but a new chipset beyond X370. Right. And a new chipset might enable, say, uh, a greater uh, number of PCI Express lanes from, mm -hmm. from the CPU or that kind of thing. Right. So there is still a possibility that you might be compelled to buy a new motherboard for the yeah. Zen 2 stuff as a result of that. We'll keep an eye out, an eye out for that. But um, for now, this appears to be good news. Sweet. We're going to quickly Excited. talk about net neutrality. I'm not going to dwell on this too long uh, because time is growing short. We only have uh, about nine days until the December 14th vote <laughs> by the FCC um, as to whether or not they want to keep the current Title II uh, classification for internet service providers, which is how net neutrality is currently enforced, uh, or whether they want to roll that back. They've indicated they want to roll that back. That seems like what they're going to do. Most Americans seem like they don't want that to happen. Um, but there's been lots of feedback for it, and there have been 50,000 comments made, uh, or net neutrality complaints, I should say. This is separate from the, the comments. So uh, back in May, the FCC made a notice of proposed rulemaking, and they opened it up for comments, and there were over 22 million comments submitted, and that's a big point of controversy right now is where those comments came from and, and that kind of thing, and whether the FCC is going to delay in order to allow further investigation into that. All that aside, though, ever since 2015, uh, ISPs have been classified as common carriers, which means that the FCC is the governing, or, or the agency that regulates them. So... Ever since 2015, there has been the ability for the public to uh, complain if they find internet service providers acting in a way that is contrary to uh, at basic Title II regulations or net neutrality. There have been 50,000 of there these complaints? There have been 50,000 of those complaints, and they've been excluded from the repeal docket. So these complaints that have been made about net neutrality infractions uh, are basically being ex excluded from this uh, look. And this is just further ev evidence of the FCC's sort of wanton dismissal of the American public's opinion in how they should proceed in this and how the, gov the internet should be regulated. So um, all this is to say, uh, I actually did a video uh, that is, we, I've already shot, but hasn't been posted yet uh, with Wendell from Level 1 Techs specifically going over pretty in-depth a lot of stuff about um, net neutrality, and that will be up on my channel in the next couple days. So uh, hopefully you guys will watch it if you want to learn a little bit more. Uh, and there's also a sort of sister video to that that's going to go on level one text where we went into, into even more depth into that, going back and looking at stuff like the 1996 Telecommunications Act, looking at what internet service providers promised Americans, which, in case you're not aware, they sort of signed a contract with the FCC and with America that by 2005, uh, like 100% of American households would have fiber to the house, fiber to the home, yeah, right. uh, with a, a 40 megabit connection for $20 a month. That's the promise wow. they made in 1996. Promise failed. By 2005, which was 12 years ago. 
You and, need to and, and, and now, and now they're like and now them. they're saying they need to like you know uh, restrict the internet and charge people more for their bandwidth and everything because they haven't followed up with the promises that they made. Anyway, all that is to say, uh, Level One Text is also having a giveaway going on right now. So if you check out the uh, video description. Uh, the links down there you can go over to the four-way giveaway thing and they have actually I believe it's a 8700 K based system uh, nice. that They're giving away in uh, combination with several other uh, Channels no so worries, check no it out worries. go win some stuff uh, Just just a little little co-plug there <laughs> Moving well, on NCX has filed for bankruptcy. Did you see this coming? Kind of I didn't really think about it. I kind of I mean, saw this coming uh, only because I follow uh, their YouTube channel, and if you look at like the stuff that happened recently with Riley uh, or uh, Keys leaving, uh, stuff meaning I mean, as far as I knew, they just like left, the but, NCX was, uh, YouTube channel. Everyone has left. Like if you look at what happened with us back but, at our former employer yeah. when we all decided <laughs> like, hey, we're 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 gonna leave because of various reasons. Sure. There are reasons that are compelling us to leave. Seems like kind of the same thing happened and over there. The same thing happened, but like because we left, like we left, but like Newegg didn't go under and go bankrupt. Newegg didn't go under. So, that's true. And that's almost, I think, why I didn't see it coming because I was part of the Newegg breakaway when we when our whole YouTube channel just dissolved, and yet the company Newegg still kept going. And so when the same thing exactly happened to the NCIX YouTube channel. That was the furthest thing from my mind, that the entire company is at jeopardy and is going to go bankrupt. Um, I thought, you know, it, that maybe they had all left for similar reasons that we did, but obviously that wasn't the case. I personally didn't see it coming. I mean, I'm sure, like, a lot of other key players at NC, NCIX or maybe even Linus could uh, see this uh, a mile away. But, but I... So, yeah, I, th I, th I think the, the comparison there to, like, the NCIX versus Newegg is NCIX... A lot of people knew of because of Linus and because of their YouTube channel. They had a very successful social media platform due to the, the YouTube channel. But and if you else. look at what Linus has done, you know he's one of the top, most recognized tech YouTubers globally now. Mm -hmm. You know he's making crazy amounts of money compared to what uh, NCX is doing with their YouTube channel now. Yeah. By comparison, Newegg had a YouTube channel that they grew for a while as we were working on it and everything like that. But Newegg wasn't necessarily as defined by the YouTube channel as I feel like NCX was. Sure. Being a Canadian-based company, which has, you know, Canada has about the, the same, or I, I believe Canada has, has fewer, uh, less population than California, for example. So there's a lot fewer people up there. So it's a smaller market. Um, so because of that, I guess, Seeing some of the deterioration of what was going on with the YouTube channel it was a big kind chunk of, of their think, company. Yeah, yeah, it was that, a big that, chunk that of their company, not just a that, small uh, branch like we were. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense. So uh, NCX was founded in uh, 1996 by Steve Wu in Burnaby, British Columbia. It was a walk-in retail outlet, and so in 1997 they years. started an online service as well. Um, they competed against traditional retailers as well as online rivals like Amazon and Newegg. And at this point, um, they have a supreme bankruptcy filos, filing. Supreme! Does yes. that mean they have a bankruptcy that is accompanied by sour cream? Yeah, sour cream and guacamole. Cream and, and I blew, guacamole. So I, I actually a caught... Supreme. Bankruptcy uh, supreme. I caught a bit of the Linus, uh, uh, the, 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 Wen, Wen the Wen show yeah. uh, on Friday about this because they were discussing it a little bit. Yeah. And they were, they were confused about supreme bankruptcy. I was like, dude, sour, sour cream, cream and guacamole... guacamole. The works. Maybe some, some chunky salsa. Fucking Canadians. That is what makes it the Supreme Bank of Sanders. Oh, yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised. God damn it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Linus Tech Tips posted a um, picture on the store uh, in Richmond, British Columbia, about it being permanently closed. So uh, some of their actual retail locations shutting down. This apparently is the location that Linus... Uh, got his first job at in the PC industry. This is where he was. He was a retail star person for a while. So yeah, there's a lot of history going on there and stuff. So it is sad. I mean, to see to see the company go under. Um, again, if you guys want a little bit more right. uh, like actual insider information, if you guys didn't already see, see the Wen show, I did watch that bit on it, and uh, Linus actually talked a decent amount about 
his, you know, co conflicting with with the management. I mean, um, certain predictions he had. You know, or... he he was a product product manager there and everything, and worked his way up um, to where he was he was pretty high up and everything. So um, he had some a decent amount of insight there, as yeah. well as uh, he talked about some of his ideas about where he thought the company should go, which, you know, you can't say. If they had done this, then they would have been successful. In retrospect, sure. it sounds sounded like a good idea and everything. He had this idea of making very small stores um, that would you know that would hold like very popular inventory, but a very small amount of it. Yeah. Um, in order to deal with the issue of shipping in in Canada, because right. shipping is very expensive in Canada, so you could have stuff shipped to the store and, and deal sure. with it that way and everything. Which uh, I mean seemed like a good idea. Who knows if it would have worked out or not? But right. Um, yeah, uh, RIP NCIX, I guess. Yeah, is the. It's crazy. It's crazy yeah. to think that they're gone. Yeah, it'll it'll be a while for me to like fully recover from like. Oh, I wonder what the NCIX, NCIX YouTube channel's up to, and and like and then re, re realize it also oh, that seems, doesn't exist anymore. It also seems weird huge. timing. Like, if I, I mean, I have no idea what any internal internal stuff going on there, whatever. But like, if I had to choose, I'd be like. Let's get through the holidays and like sell as much of our inventory as possible. Right. Yeah. Like, have you know, one last hurrah. Recoup, you sure. know, some of some of our investment and that kind of thing. But right. like having it happen right at the end of November, beginning of December, um, the website apparently is still working. I haven't looked at it today. I'm also really curious to people... see like the 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 uh, you know the next VH1 uh, updates. Like NCIX YouTubers, where are they now? Because oh, yeah. I'm curious. Like, are they all going to be snatched up by LTT? Are they going to go? Are they going to stay in tech, or are they going to be, you know, forever, forever lost to us? Well, Riley, Riley has his own channel now. That's Keys. Yeah, uh, I always liked his stuff. I thought he did, he was he's a really good presenter and stuff. And, yeah, and had some some good jokes and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool to see him join the the Linus Media Group. Yeah. You know, they do they do good work and stuff. I hope they stick yeah. around. Anyway, so, so long story sh short, success. We've destroyed NCIX. Yay! Right? No, no, no. I, I don't want to want to come off like that, but yeah. Sorry, I was yeah. I was at no. Newegg when Newegg expanded to Canada, and that was kind of like the the <laughs> undercurrent of everything. It's like, yeah, let's get them, let's get them, and we didn't. Uh, but yeah, but I they got themselves. Had apparently. nothing to do with that. Cool stuff. All right, uh, since Coffee Lake has launched uh, in the past couple months, uh, there's been some blowback towards Intel because Coffee Lake is not compatible not backwards compatible, even though it still uses the same socket LG1151. Uh, you need a Z370 motherboard uh, to, 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 it's got to work. got some different ground pins or something like that, right? Apparently, and Intel's explanation was that uh, due to the additional power requirements of going up to like the six, six core. core options like you have with an 8500 and an 8700K, uh, that that's why they needed to not make it backwards compatible. According to this video cards article, which derives from a Baidu article, which derives from a PC Lab article, so this comes from China, uh, there is a modder who has gone and modded a Z170 motherboard, specifically an MSI Z170A X Power Titanium, uh, done modifications to both the CPU microcode and the BIOS in order to get an 8350K to work on the Z170 motherboard. This seems super legit from what I can tell here. Is there a because tutorial? There are, uh, no, no, no. Uh, this, this is beyond the capacity of most the people. The average user. And the uh, speculation also here is that because he's using, using the quad core 8350K, which is a lot more akin to, to what would be compatible with Z170, like, you know, your Skylake 6700K or 6600K quad cores, yeah. um, is potentially why it's able to, to, to to handle it. Right. Also, the X Power Titanium uh, from MSI is a high end motherboard that ha does have a pretty overbuilt power delivery. Sure. All that said, uh, the BIOS is listing right here with the Z170 motherboard and the 8350K. There's a ton of different screenshots of CPU Z, uh, CPU Z going with the CPU ID and actually showing the CPU ID signature and comparing it to. Uh, what's going on in the microcode and everything, just to show, sure. like, yes. We believe you. This is legit. Uh, plenty of screen caps and everything. So all you need is, like, a $400 motherboard for your Core i3 to yeah. work on Coffee Lake. Apparently. And uh, you need... Add I mean, it's cool. It's cool, but... 
Yeah, Andrew Wu from ASUS confirmed uh, just a few weeks ago that the decision to uh, disable uh, Coffee Lake S support NZ170 and 270 was dictated directly by Intel, even though older motherboards could easily support them. This ah. is just an actual use case of someone actually going in and making the necessary modifications and everything to get it working on that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Oftentimes you wonder how locked out it is when they make things incompatible that maybe right. should have been compatible. Right. And uh, yeah, whether it's like the old school pencil trick or whatever else. Um, yeah, kind of cool that they were able to get that up and running. All right, next segment. Sure. New segment. A brand new segment on the show. I'm <gasps> sure it's going to be very popular. <gasps> I even made a new lower thirds for it. What's it going to be? What is it? What do we got? We're all going to die. What is it? We're all going to die? Yes. Die as in die? Or AI. D A I. This is the A I segment. A I D. We're all gonna die. I. We're all gonna D A I. Yeah. See. Ah, uh, it's about A I and so how. It's, it's A I. And you're gonna kill us yeah. all. Got it. We're all Love gonna, it. We're all gonna die. Totally on board. All right, there we go. We got the new. Aha ha. This little robot dude down there. <laughs> Poke his face. The, Obviously yeah, representing AI. AI. So we're gonna talk robot. about some AI related stuff first right. off. Uh, and I should mention a couple of these articles did come from. Uh, the level one texts the the weekly news show that they uh, usually post on um, uh, Monday evening. Although I've completely lost track because if several of these I saw during the week and pulled them up, and a couple of those I saw on the show. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to give some credit there. Mm -hmm. um, point being, over on CNN Tech, uh, 375 million jobs may be automated by 2030. Uh, that's in 13 years, by the Whoa. way. Uh, Whoa. Sooner than you might expect. <laughs> This is a new report by the McKinsey Global Institute. Uh, cautions that as many as 375 million workers will need to switch occupational categories by 2030 due to automation. Uh, basically, the robots, the AI, they're coming. They're coming for you. They're going to take. They're going to take your job. How does that work okay. then? I mean, all these people, because obviously the AI is going to be doing like more simplistic jobs, right? They're not going to be doing super complex stuff. So a lot of people who maybe don't have college degrees or don't have like super high education. They're going to be out of a job because a bot will be able to do it for them better than they can. Probably. Um, and then the only, and like yeah, and then people are saying, well, that'll open up more jobs because people need to make the robots. It's true, but the people who like the people who are getting right. put out of a job are not going to be qualified enough. Have you read ahead? I feel like you're setting up my next my next articles really well. Here. I had no idea. Okay. Honestly, I'm just like riffing on on this right now. So but, obviously, uh, yeah, as, as Kyle is stating right now, the automation, the fear of automation and the robots coming and taking your job and the AI and whatnot only is to be feared if you're, you know, doing manual labor, simple jobs, that kind of thing that can easily be replaced by robots, that kind of thing. Anything that might be, say, creative or require inspiration or, you know, the uniqueness of the human mind, say, like, making art, something like that. AI is never going to take come, come for us and, and, and take over that kind of thing, right? They've even tackled that? Is that even happening? They're going to be fucking Picasso bots? Check out this uh, heavy metal album. Uh, it's actually a black metal made album. By a machine. It is made by the group known as Dada Bots. It is their debut album. It was created by a neural network studying the work of a human metal band called Kralis. Or Kralis. Uh... Basically, they, they would feed it parts of the music, and, they, and then and they would the AI would spit something out back at them, and they'd be like, yeah, that's good, or no, that's bad, and they would train it that way. Uh, the, the album is called Coditany of Timeness. It has five tracks, <laughs> did, and did it freaking shreds. Did, it freaking shreds, man. It's it ridiculous. It's hard. Uh, you can actually listen to the entire Wait, album. Wait, okay, let, let me listen to one of the tracks. Can we listen to it bank. on stream? I hope we're not going to get flagged or anything like that. I just want to... All right, I, we'll, we'll be talking I'm jump, over it I'm jump slightly. forward. Okay, yeah. So this is all produced by a bot? Yeah. By bots? Okay. I can make that. I can make that on my phone right now. That's just like screeching out of my ah. ass. Ah! Ah! I mean... No, I mean... Ah. It just sounds black, like noise. It's black metal, so... Maybe I just don't get it. Maybe I'm just not black. Maybe I'm just, just not understand. metal enough. You just I'm not don't metal understand. enough to understand that this is actually a real masterpiece. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think we're a long way off. Let's listen to we, enter, enter Giveness. Just because we can have them make songs doesn't mean that they're going to be yeah. good. 
Oh, listen to that. Wait, they all sound exactly the same. They kind of do. Every song that you've played so far could have easily just been one song, and no one would doubt you. <laughs> this is black metal, Kyle. You don't it's understand. Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> Codigny of Timeness, all right? <laughs> How if about you just could understand the condition of timeness. But it's, it's, all it's, it's, exactly, all it's the same track, just replicated five times, and they call it an album. I'm sorry. I, I think this is awesome. I think it's pretty. <laughs> this is pretty epic. No, like like someone said in in chat just now. There's no emotion to it. It's very sterile. I, okay. I think I think we're okay. I think I think all the black metal <laughs> artists are safe. Your job security as a black metal artist is right, safe right, for now. Hey, right, hey, right. <laughs> keep on shredding. Look, if you if you can't appreciate the genius of Codigny of Timeness, <laughs> and you know, and you know, some people are gonna get super hyped about this and like tattoo Codigny of Timeness like on their neck. Oh yeah, probably. It's freaking the best band ever, man. Because they're, they're robots, man. They don't, they don't even have souls. They don't need souls to make music, man. I've been so, an no. appointment. Uh, to, get appointment. That, to get that done. <laughs> Slid for a tattooing. All right, all right. So, while we were discussing Codigny of time, Timeness, uh, from my understanding, the singularity happened. The uh, singularity happened? Yes, at least according to this article on futurism, uh, Google's artificial intelligence has built an AI that outperforms any made by humans. So that is an AI hmm. building an AI that Ooh. is superior to the AI, AI that section. we were able to build. Really? This AI building another AI. And from my understanding, singularity, right? It's it's just it's iterative. It it, it builds on itself and given an infinite amount of computing power it can I don't know what the world. The, I don't know what these kites have to do with anything, but apparently this is how the robots take over. Is by identifying everything's, everything's a percentage. The kites, the kites, are okay. The people are what it's targeting to kill. I think that's what's ah yeah. Ninety nine percent gonna kill this. Yeah, dude. these people, gonna kill that dude. Ninety nine percent. They a threat. The robot. The Although kill, that the kite killer in the air, robots. <laughs> the kite in the air is pretty threatening at ninety nine percent as well. But they it's don't... probably supporting a, a person. That's why it's identified that. Uh, kill the kite and you'll kill the guy. Yeah. Kill the dude. All right, makes sense. So again, uh, I wish I, I wish I could rattle off a few more of the specifics from this article, but uh, due to uh, lack of time today, I'm accurate. gonna have to direct you to the link in this video's description if you want to read up a little bit more on that. Point being, though, Google's AI has made an AI that's smarter than itself. So uh, AIception. Officially, I believe I believe that's the singularity. I'm pretty sure. That's the singularity. It's happened right singularity now. Singularity achieved. Achievement and unlocked. We're all gonna die. Um, die D A I. But what's gonna happen um, with the AI killer robots? That's yeah. really the question. Of course, there's probably gonna be lots of countries that build AI killer robots. Uh, Russia, in particular, very interested in AI killer robots. They have specifically stated at a meeting in Geneva earlier this month that um, any. UN say sanctions or rules against the uh, R Russia's development of, of, of robots they're going to ignore. Okay, so, so it's going to trek on. It's yes. going to trek on. Russia said they would not adhere to any ro any prohibitions on killer robots. That's wow. what's been stated here. Okay. Very very clear. Killer robots um, are going to happen. Which makes sense. If I was if I was Russia, I I would want killer robots too. Well, yeah, just you're Russia. There's nothing to do there but seems drink to make sense. and make killer robots. But the you're fact salty. is that the UN isn't going to stop them. Um, here's a picture of a killer robot. I like robot. the UN's stupid. They're, like, they're not going to kill a robot. This robots. is one of uh, Kalishnikov's uh, automated weapons. Kalishnikov! We've, we've shown them here on the, on, the, on the channel before. Let's move on, though. Yikes. All right. So how are robots going to uh, strangle you until you're dead? Good question, Kyle. We are all going to die. Harvard and MIT scientists have built robot muscles that can lift 1,000 times their own weight. Robot muscles. Yes, robot muscles. What the hell is a robot because muscle? Because robots are going to they're gonna need to overpower their human counterparts. Why don't they Obviously, muscles, having superior intelligence, uh, uh, even though it's artificial, isn't sufficient. They're going to have to take advantage of the robot muscles. Are their muscles artificial? Uh, I... 
that's a little too deep or whatever. This it also... could make soft robots safer. Oh uh, yeah, well these. Uh, sorry, uh, researchers at Harvard's Weiss Institute and MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Uh, announced on November 27th that they've created robotic muscles that can lift up to 1,000 times their own weight. Uh, they're simple objects constructed out of metal or plastic skeletons that are covered in either liquid or air, then sealed in plastic or fabric, fabric skins. The muscle pulls taut when a vacuum is created inside the skin and goes slack when the vacuum is released by folding the skeletons in different ways, hence origami. Are they comparing the our muscles the muscle to plastic bags? Kind of. Got it. That appears to be how, how it basically functions. All right. Um, but we've got a bunch of bags in our bones. Also, they've got the banana. Bodies. They got the banana for scale there, so you have to give them that. Yeah. Um, it's very accurate, scientific. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this being combined with, with AI, machine guns and lasers, um, and with machine guns and lasers, as, <laughs> as Kyle has just mentioned. Also, I want this video pause. Where was I? It's weird. A thousand times their own weight. That's pretty. That's, that's more than it's a I can scary. lift. scary, yeah. I can't lift 1,500 pounds, 1,600 pounds. I would die. Have you seen Have you seen the new Atlas? DAI. Have you seen the... We oh, yeah, we fuck this thing. We didn't show this on the channel or on the live fuck stream yet. But this um, thing. Boston Dynamics. This was uh, earlier in November. This is uh, like, almost a month ago. And, like, the fact that this there's the a new Atlas robot... This. So like, if there's a video on this, that means that there's even crazy robots that aren't even being shown to us yet. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, like this got... is this is child's play, but still this this isn't insane. even using the super one thousand times more powerful muscles. I know. There's imagine no plastic that, bags anywhere. Imagine how. No plastic Look at bags. the flip. Look at what it. Look at. <laughs> and then it raises its arms in triumph. What's what was the was the chick uh, the crazy Olympic chick, black chick in the uh, Olympics? What? But Simone Bile. Oh yeah, Simone uh, Biles. She ain't got shit on this Atlas bot from Probably Boston not. Dynamics. She uh, ain't got shit. Elon, Elon Musk tweeted, tweeted in response to that and said, "Yeah, give it a few years, and they'll It'll move so you fast all. you won't be able to see them." I saw that. Yeah, That's which is terrifying. Um, Thanks, Elon. Anyway, appreciate though. it, bro. All right, let's move on to some more uplifting news. We cannot sleep at night now. Our final segment, well, until we do the Q and A and stuff. Is of course. Wait, 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 wait. We're all going to do. All right, lean back and don't don't yell really loud. Ready? Tales from space. Okay. Might have done it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. How did it sound, guys? How did it sound? Actually, I listened back to it the last time, and it was like re it blasted it out and peaked everywhere. Oh, jeez. So, so I was trying to turn make the game it, down was, a little bit. I'm not sure. I don't know if it worked or not. <laughs> but we'll see. Tales from Tin Can. Zero of ten. Everyone said it's it fun. sucked. Not enough echo. Not enough echo. All right. It yeah, sounds we'll, great. <laughs> it <did> our, <laughs> Needs we more. We did echo. our best. Okay. All right. We did. We'll work on the echo. All right. We'll work on the reverb portion. We're still right. working out the kinks. So. uh... Really cool article from NASA, actually, about NASA. the wheels that they're making for their Mars rover. Um, and in fact, mm -hmm. they have an entire special page on it that you can scroll through, talking about uh, the history of rovers that they've made. They've sent to, like, the moon and Mars before, and the various uh, attacks that they've gone with when it comes to making the wheels. Because, obviously, you can't just make a big rubber wheel like, a, like you do here on Earth, because there's a lot of other... Um, uh, harsh conditions that it has to deal it's gotta with. It's got to be a space wheel. It's got to be a space Those wheel. Those wheels so, are flat. They, um, they need filling. So what they're developing is actually Ooh. being sort of called like a chain mail wheel. Oh. So it's got a it's got a bunch of chains connected together. This one has sort of an internal structure as well that, that holds everything out. Uh, during the mid-2000s, they developed what they called a spring tire just an airless compliant tire consists of several hundred coiled steel wires driven mm. into a, woven into a flexible mesh. Um, the Mars rover, which uh, we follow a little bit, the Curiosity rover, um, actually had some damage uh, that was recorded, and it actually sent back in pictures of its wheels, and it did not use this type of wheels. So this is the stuff they're developing for the next Mars missions, uh, whether you're talking about rovers being sent there or uh, actual 
Um, Do we um, know what the issue is with regular rubber wheels? Like yeah, they break down. They uh, break. they they they, they suffer or? through the the harsh environment, so they can deteriorate oh. too easily. Gotcha. And they're not capable of dealing with um, rolling over like rocks and and harsh terrain and stuff like that. Hmm. So uh, the solution they have right now, and the the fanciest thing that they're they're sort of publicizing is using nickel titanium. Uh, which has a shape memory alloy. So basically it can bend out of shape and then it will uh, snap back into shape. So that means it can deform to go over different objects and that kind of thing. Um, and it's it's just kind of cool looking. That is cool. And It's really cool actually. I, I, I spotted this earlier this week. They have a few videos on this of uh, the wheel in, actual, in, in, in action. Rolling over different so it's terrain. So sort of like it's very like malleable, kind of conforms yeah, to whatever so it's rolling over. They're looking for That's sort cool. of a cross between you know the all terrain capabilities of rolling over a bunch That's of different types of, wow. of rocks and whatnot, wow. being incredibly durable. Yeah. Uh, so that you know there's it can't it can't pop or anything or, or get holes in it, um, and and then also the ability to uh, get deformed and then snap back into shape. Wow. So um, pretty cool. And uh, again, this website um, uh, is nasa.gov slash special sauce wheels wow. and uh, even has sort of a close up of the atomic structure um, that sort of can bend. This is the, this back. is the end game for your your classroom science project. Oh yeah, right. All right, we've got some rocks and you guys are gonna have to build the wheels, some things with wheels that can go over the rocks. Go. You have one week. This, then, is what, this is what NASA. This is NASA. Like, NASA level. There's like one kid who comes up with this stuff, and the and the teacher's right. like, what? "Jesus, you should. We need to send you to <laughs> a special program. We need to graduate you immediately. <laughs> send yes. you to Yale. All right. Sweet. Uh, Voyager. Voyager one is the Voyager farthest man-made object from Earth. In fact, it is, I believe it is the only uh, extra solar system. Or object, man-made object that has traveled outside of its solar system, and even 37 years after uh, it was last uh, had any manipulation or, or changing course done, uh, Voyager One has just fired its thrusters once again, intentionally, which right? is pretty crazy. Yeah, very intentionally. Um, it was first launched in 1977. It is the That's most well-traveled traveled uh, spacecraft ever launched by NASA. Uh, it relies on attitude control thrusters to orient itself so it can communicate with Earth, Earth using the deep, deep space network. Uh, they noticed diminishing returns with the thrusters since 2014 uh, when they needed to fire up more often to give off the same amount of energy. So to extend the life of the mission, the researchers came up with a novel idea of reactivating the craft's traje trajectory correction maneuver thrusters. Um, and they were basically fired up in order to extend the life of the mission for just a few more years, so it's still uh, Voyager actually has a wide. Uh, uh, there's a collection of different uh, sensors and other objects that are attached to it that do different jobs. Some of them are still working, and some of them have an end of life. So the article mm -hmm. from Futurism has a little bit more information on that, um, as far as the um, sensors and, and whatnot on Voyager that are still sending information back to Earth. Um, but Voyager ones like our 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 alien feeler yeah right like that like it's the furthest thing away from earth that we ever, thing away ever from made it's also right? the thing that has a, it's got the little gold placard on it that has uh, some of the base so the the um it's got a, a very fundamental set of information that's meant to communicate certain stuff to like some a, songs a, a, music any, and shit uh, right. it's got it's got like the human anatomy and yeah there's yeah. there's a few other things on there as well um but yeah it's pretty cool um thought that was interesting especially that something that was built and launched so long ago i mean 1977 that's 40 years right yeah yeah 40 years that's a while. um and and yet we can still communicate with it and it's still it's still getting some work done cray cray all right uh spacex is working on their big old rocket uh, the falcon heavy and in fact they've been doing some tests on it and elon musk tweeted earlier this week that uh they're actually planning to do a test launch, and when they do a test launch for something like this, there's a relatively high chance of failure, that the thing's just going to explode or something like that. So they put a payload in it that's just there to be dead weight, which means that they can choose whatever they want for the payload. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, they've chosen some, some unique stuff in the past 
and I'm forgetting what actually they did. So they they did, but a what they're promising. Not a puppy, but the, what they're promising to send up in the Falcon Heavy is a red Tesla Roadster, uh, at least according to what Elon Musk tweeted. So they can um, potentially blow one up. There was apparently some confusion between what the what he told The Verge on Saturday and um, what some emails said, but he has confirmed that the plan is real um, and that the Tesla payload is real. He wanted it to be playing Space Oddity by David Bowie, which is which is very appropriate. Yeah. Ground, ground controlled Major Tom and everything. Of course. Um, and uh, the Falcon Heavy would send the Tesla into orbit around Mars, assuming it didn't explode. Uh, it would potentially be in deep space for a billion years or so if it doesn't blow up on ascent, said Elon Musk. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of cool. Uh, cheese, yes, I'm sorry, is what they sent up in the uh, the, the original Dragon. Cheese. Uh, yeah. Just cheese. Uh, they were inspired kind of by cheese? the suggestion of a tra- of a friend in British comedy group uh, Monty Python's Cheese Shop sketch. So the Dragon spacecraft's dem- demo flight in 2010 carried a giant wheel of French, French Gruyere. Gruyere cheese. Ooh, great! Gruyere is good. Yeah, aliens will love that shit. Super tasty. Fuck yeah, yeah. Gruyere. So yeah, I guess. Nice. If you well, really want a Tesla Roadster, I go mean, into space and just snatch the one that they're deploying out to aliens. Yeah. I don't know. Very viable. Like what? So, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. But like, what if, what if five hundred years from now, like the Tesla orbiting Mars is like some, you know, like like monument or something like like that, right? Because I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Colonizing Mars is a pretty is a is a pretty big deal and be sure. making humanity a multi planet species and everything like that. And we don't know if this is gonna be leading up to that or what or whatever. Sure. Um uh like I, I watch I've I've, I've watched some of Star the, the Star Wars Discovery series, which I don't think you've watched, but like at one mm-hmm. point they made some reference to Elon Musk, which was very like, oh, like he's a very pioneering individual and like i don't want to i don't want to lionize someone like that while they're still alive or anything like that but it would be kind of fun if if a tesla going around mars in the future was some sort of significant object or something like that who knows yeah all right lastly on the iss uh, apparently they have pizza night uh, movie night, Why I guess and they celebrate with pizza dominoes Uh, so newsweek has an article that is not a pizza it's a pizza flying across. I thought that was going to say space station. Space. I was like, "Is this not? Is this can't be?" As well space. as a time lapse of them preparing the pizza and cooking it. There's going to be so much mozzarella foot. just floating in the air. This was what I'm not? confused about, right? Like, it's not it's z- it's not zero g, but it's very low gravity. But how all the things toppings stay around. on? Stuff, yeah. You usually see, you know, in the movies, everything squirts around, and you get little blobs of stuff. Everywhere, right. but they're apparently able to to. Well, it doesn't look like they have cheese on fix the pizza. It, the pizza. They also cut it with scissors, and I didn't really see the people eating it. But it is kind of funny to think like, if you're eating a meal in space, like you don't really need a table or anything like that. It's just right. your food just kind of floats of there, and like you eat it, and then yeah. you just let it continue yeah. to float in That's front of you weird. or whatever. Anyway, I thought that was coming to the dining or you know, eat your abusing. food on the dining air. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, the dining area. And and uh-huh. but, but good good to know that on the ISS they also get to have pizza night from time to time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Shakey's Shakey's got to hit up hit up the, the space. Hey. Space scene. Given how little research I did and how few notes I had, I think we got through my stories well enough. So hey, Beautiful. cheers. Cheers. We are done with that. You drank way yeah. more beer than I did. I did. You were talking more. Mm-hmm. I was drinking more. Mm. Cool. Are we doing donations? Yes, uh, we're gonna jump over to uh, donations and Q and A. So, so um, I need to switch so mice. Wait. Let's see. And okay. scroll. All right. Uh, Josh Rowell, six dollars and sixty-six cents. Book. Yeah. Looking to make a killer ITX build. I remember Ooh. back in the day that disabling hyperthreading will lower temperatures and power. Is that still a thing? Uh, yes, like but not to a degree that I would recommend doing it. Hyper-threading yeah, it. is typically something that you want to leave on. The only reason you might want to disable it is to set up some sort of a, a speculative scenario where you are trying to 
purposely hamper the the chip's performance or to make a comparison or something like that. Yeah. No, leave hyperthreading on, man. It's, yeah, leave it's, it on. It's yeah. Just leave it on. Uh, MB67, 30 bucks. Congratulations on surpassing 700,000 subscribers. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you, MB67. I didn't realize that you, you passed 700. I did. Uh, Excellent. I, I almost didn't realize either. That's I think awesome. it happened on Saturday. Yeah. And I wasn't really, like, I just, it was one of those days where I just didn't really look at social media or anything yeah. like that all day. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, MB67. Yeah, I'm, I'm up over 700K. Nice. Uh, I don't have a 700,000 subscriber giveaway plans, but I think I'm going to do one at 750, um, which is Pretty, yeah. You know, probably gonna be in another month or so. Three quarters so, of a uh, We'll wait till then. Yeah, nice. three quarters of a million seems like a good option. And in, sure. the, in the meantime, uh, like we've already mentioned, we've got the. I don't know. Did we do the proper announcement? On my, we didn't. I don't think so. We can do an end end announcement. We're right here. we're doing a uh, charity live stream for twelve hours. We're gonna Kyle and I are gonna be gaming and live streaming right here in about four days on Saturday, December 9th. December ninth. So uh, Mark you'll, your calendars. you'll be able to donate. The donations are going to go into charity, but yes. um, for people who donate, we're also going to have two computers, and we're going to do a drawing at the end of the uh, the end of the day to give away both of those computers. Yeah. So if you donate money, you'll be entered into the raffle to win one of the two computers. Yes. Um, and they're going to be pretty epic computers. It's so you guys should nice. definitely mine, join us for the stream. Mine is, the one I already built is worth about 8 or $1,900. 18 yeah. or 1900 dollars So yeah. it's a very nice system. Uh, very great. Uh, get you into the high-end desktop AMD platform. Sick. And you guys All will right. be able to see us gaming, which is always fun. Fred Rant with a $50 donation. Nice. Paul, did your wife enjoy the 50, 43 inches you gave her the other week? Fred, that was very, very, I like the way you phrased that. Uh, yes. Actually, I gave it to her last night. Damn. To be a little bit more specific. Um, I bought, so Fred's talking about a 43-inch Dell 4K monitor oh, that I God. bought. God. Uh, I got on Black Friday, uh, it was an Amazon Lightning deal for $650. And actually, yesterday, uh, I did an unboxing video. Actually, I did. I did. A, I did a haul video that'll be up in, a, in another day or two of all the Voice. stuff that I got uh, for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Unboxed it. Actually, went and installed it on her uh, desk last night, and it's crazy huge. But she's going to just that one single monitor, and since it's 4K and it's so big, like she likes it. So she's been pretty happy with it. She nice. she was doing some Excel work on it for like her work work stuff, and she loves how many cells she can see in the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and then she was also playing some uh, some World of Warcraft and some Overwatch, and she she was really loving it. So I think she's going to keep really it. That gives you a competitive edge in certain games. I was like, yeah, I feel like the people, everything you're shooting should so, be like, easier to shoot because it's bigger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's much. Yeah. Right. Instead yeah. of a tiny head that you're aiming at, it's like a freaking yeah, it's watermelon. Very large. So that makes sense. Uh, but thank you, Fred. Hacks. Pure hacks. Uh, Scott Dilbeck, thank you for your six sixty six donation. Thanks, guys, for the honorable mention on Pimp My PC. Paul, are we going to be seeing your HTPC finish before Christmas? Scott, I don't want to promise anything. I will try. But I don't want to promise anything. I I will try. I, I really can't say He's anything. He's doing his than. best, guys. He's I doing see, his best. I see the potential for me having time to do it. It's just a matter of, of how the next couple weeks go, I think. Because it's really one of those projects that I've had ready to go to the next step on, but I don't need to because the system is functional as is right now. So it's been easy to keep pushing it back and pushing it back. That's that's really what's what it comes down to for that. But I know what you mean. I do want to move to the next step on it, and there is there is there is a potential. There's definitely potential for me to get it done before uh, before Christmas. I'll try. I'm well, looking forward to it. Uh, Kiwi Crypto 12, 20 bucks, no Ooh. comment. Thanks, Kiwi Crypto. Thank you, Kiwi. Uh, Jamie Snelling for the 5 GBP. Differences on a fancy SLI bridge and a plain bridge that comes with the motherboard. Would have bought from store, but shipping was $22.50 to the UK, so whatever. So, um, Jamie, the only uh, time you're going to deal with a potential incompatibility issue with an SLI bridge is if you're talking about the most recent generation God, of GPUs it. from NVIDIA, the uh, GTX 1070 and 1080 and 1080 Ti, those require what's called high bandwidth SLI bridges. 
And the difference when you're looking at the fancy, more expensive ones and the cheap kind of flexible ones is actually has to do with the traces going from point A to point B and them needing to be able to, uh, to, to exchange data at a very high frequency with uh, enhanced precision. So the rigid PCB ones have very specific layouts of the length of the trace from point A to point B, which enhances the amount of uh, the, the time that it takes to go from, from point A to point B, which enhances the precision, which is what makes it compatible with the uh, latest NVIDIA GPUs. If you're going with 900 series or anything before, the flexible ones work just fine. Um, but yeah, if you are going with the current generation AMD, or I'm sorry, NVIDIA SLI configuration, definitely want to get an HB SLI bridge. Yep, okay. well said. Uh, Jamie Snelling, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Thomas Drilling, $5. Try a couple of Boilermakers next show. I want to see you guys pass the fuck out. Boilermakers? Boilermakers. Boilermakers, what's that? I believe I gotta double check. Otherwise, I'm gonna be wrong about it. No idea what a boiler. You go, you look that uh, up. I'll go on to Ballantine for the 12 Canadian years. May the prices be low and the frame rates be high. We couldn't agree more. Thank you yeah. very much, Ballantine. Uh, Dave Fredrickson, five dollars. Same thing I said in the other half. You guys are awesome. Following since New Eggs yoked number one. Nice. Fucking OG. That's old school. Thank you, Dave. Nice dude. Boilermaker. Um, I was right. Is a shot in a beer. Shot in a beer. Uh, typically it is an inexpensive beer with an expensive whiskey. Okay. In Texas, it's known as a two-step. A two-step. In England, the term boilermaker refers to half pint of, dra of draft mild mixed with half pint of bottled brown ale. Okay. So it's just a shot of whiskey okay. and some beer right after. Nice. I'm yeah, gonna oil a glass a of beer and a shot of whiskey. Next, uh, next time I go to Texas, I'll order a boiler maker. The beer is either served as a chaser or mixed with the whiskey. Mixed? Ugh. Yeah. I don't even need a chaser. Just just give me a shot of whiskey and a beer. We should do a, an Irish car bomb episode, which would essentially, yeah. essentially be the same thing when it comes to alcohol That's intake. True. That's true. Uh, Dingo on my 40, $5. You guys should play Near Automata. It's awesome. If you love it, play Bayonetta, Vanquish, and Metal Gear Rising. Rising, their games are intense. You said that Nier was pretty good. Again, yeah, oh, that's just it's, that it's one of those good. games that I don't think was like necessarily a mass, like a widely AAA advertised AAA title that everyone has heard of. Yeah. But I've heard of it multiple times mm -hmm. in reference. It's like this was a really good game this year. So. Yeah. Cool. I should yeah, check that that's out. As then. far as it goes. Thanks for the recommendation, Craig Pettigrew for the five Canadiers. Is, is you, Peter your brother? Peter Pettigrew? Peter Pettigrew. I don't know who that is. Who's that? Harry Potter? Sorry, I'm not a Harry Potter nerd. Okay, sorry. Nerd! It's all this is his finger. That's all his left. It's his finger. Sorry, Craig. Uh... Nerd, uh, you guys, Gamers Nexus and Jay, helped me build and overclock my first budget computer, Ryzen 1300X. A3320M, 30, 30, don't judge me, lol. 550 watt PSU, 8 gigs of HyperX RAM, R9380, 4 gigabyte. That's mm -hmm. a pretty solid system. I, for a for nice budget entry level computer. You're eventually going to want to upgrade your motherboard. The GPU and the motherboard, yeah. Because A320. Um, you can't overclock. You can't overclock. It's not going to have good power delivery, even if you. Like, even if you're to upgrade from a 1300X to like an 1800X yeah. or a 1700. It's not going to be able to to maintain a high clock speed on those GPUs for a long period of time. That'll be your that'll be your weak point. But all that said, you've got a nice balanced system for now. Yeah. But you will probably want to upgrade that motherboard if uh, you're planning to upgrade the rest of your system. Even more down so, the reason line. to do so with uh, Ryzen two being now confirmed to support AM four. Exactly. That's awesome. Uh, ben Woodward for the ten bucks building mm. first PC to game and stream and didn't realize my choices may be good for gaming but not necessarily for streaming. Asus Strix two seventy E i seven seventy seven hundred K and a GTX ten seventy. Will this setup suffice? Thanks for streaming. Yes. So you have hyper threading on that seventy seven hundred K. You should be fine. You, you should be fine. Some uh, uh, Gamers Nexus in particular has tested these configurations and actually found this is 7700K uh, simply because it's limited to four, uh, four cores and eight threads does lag behind when it comes to the stream quality if you compare it to, say, a six-core AMD option on the AM4 platform. That said, you have a 7700K, which means that you have an internal GPU that has an H.264 and I believe an H.265 hardware encoder. So I would suggest 
that you uh, use take advantage of that. Uh, again, there's further developments with stream quality and that kind of thing, but yes, you can get by with gaming and streaming with the 7700K and um, you're not gonna suffer that much. But I would recommend uh, taking advantage of QuickSync for uh, your stream encoder. That would be a good option for you. Definitely uh, do some A-B comparison testing with, with QuickSync and also with uh, the native encoder, the H.264 encoder that comes on the GTX 10 series cards. I mean, if you have a 1070, you might as well check out what the difference is there. I mean, it, it kind of depends on the rest of your hardware setup and, and what settings you're streaming out. You can use the N NV encoder. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can use GPU or CPU. I would say take a look at both and see which one works better for you. In my personal experience, the 7700K, I have not tested it directly against this, like the uh, like six or eight core Ryzen chips, but I haven't really noticed any significant problems with the quality when streaming, and that was probably at like 3500 kilobits per second, 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS. If you want to scale upwards of that, then you like like Paul said, Gamers Nexus has verified that the performance might not be as smooth beyond those settings. But, um, yeah, just go ahead and check it out for yourself. Uh, thank you very much for the input, though. Uh, HX Fear No Fish XG. $5. I decided Fear no to... Fish. Im Fear No Fish. Uh, I decided to impulse buy a 10-year-old Quadro FX 3700 just to say that I have a Quadro. That being said, any ideas what it could be used for? So you bought a Quadro just to say you have a Quadro. You have no idea what to use it for. Um... Uh, workstation applications, 3D modeling, 3D rendering, uh, video editing, um, a lot of these things that you could do with a gaming GPU. Hopefully you're not trying to game with a Quadro. That's not the most ideal. FX 3700, geez. I would say upgrade I mean, your CPU and your GPU unless you're just sticking to a workstation system. But I'm even sure then. it's functional as a video card and giving you video outs and everything like ten that. 10-year-old quadro. 10 years old, there would be much more viable and powerful options even that are 2 or 3 years old right now. Yeah. Um, for your solution. So I would I, use it I for would, anything. I would keep it as a, as a vanity piece or you know put it in a display case or something like that. Yeah, use that's, it as a that's what I would do. ZZ Hardy, 10 Australians. I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords. Me as too. We. Honor them. Yes, honor respect them, them. because uh, it's it's either that we or have they never kill us spoken all. disparagingly of them, and therefore they should treat us with kindness and respect. In robots, we trust. Zachary Hummel, twenty dollars, no comment. Thank, thank you, you very much, Zachary. Zachary. Love you. Appreciate it. Fred Rand, fit five dollars. I believe Ooh, you two you, are really AI and not real. You are here to set us all up for destruction. You know that's going to become a, like a perfectly legitimate question. Like right now, is everyone online just a robot? No, like for real, right We're now. A Google robot. Right now, you look at something like a Twitter feed or, a, or, or, or you know, a social media feed or something like that, and you see stuff that's posted, and you wonder, like, is this news article written by a bot? There's lots of news articles that are written by a bot. They can they make just a gather the information album, and put it together album. and post it. They can make a metal album. Is they this can Twitter write post being written by a bot? We're going to come to a point where we can see videos and we're like, is this a real video I'm watching that real people made and are talking to me? Or is this a 3D generated video that was made by an artificial intelligence based like that. on a bunch of deductions of what people want to see? That should be a law. If something's made by a robot, it needs to explicitly say that. So we know like a human didn't make this. I would actually be okay with that. But honestly, that's going to be a thing because... As AI gets more and more intelligent, and as it's applied towards things like selling products and something like that, all they really care about is eyeballs. That's all. That's all. That's all that's being sold when you're watching TV or watching ad-supported content or something like that. How many eyeballs are watching those ads that are being shown? So, pitting, sh giving AI the end goal of like, hey, make content that people are gonna watch. And knowing that AI is iterative and can build on itself and can become much more intelligent building on itself than... That takes all least. the fun out of it. Yeah. What if so, movies so, start being directed by so robots? That's, that's going to be a concern. Like, we're looking, whatever you're watching, it's like, Terrible. is that real? Or did or an artificial it? intelligence Created. build that because they knew it would make me watch it for half an hour? Yeah. From all the machine learning, the precision, and they could do it better than a human could. But the porn's going to be awesome, so I, Ooh, I'm, porn, all, see, I'm okay with it. We, we have built a case, suddenly. Coming soon, you know what I mean. Uh, all right, Q -Ki -Ki Kiwi Crypto 12, $20, no comment. Thank you very much, Kiwi. Thank you, Appreciate Kiwi. it, sir. 
Pair A slots, $5. Catching some of the show for the second time in a row. Real awesome bits of tech this episode. Here, take my money. Did you cover the Razer phone? Um, that's a little bit old news. I think we covered that probably a couple episodes back. We've discussed it. We, neither of us have actually done hands-on with it or used it or anything like that. Um, actually, I, we were hanging out with a, our friend who also happens to work at Razer uh, a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. and... The thought occurred to me to be like, hey, hook me up with a Razer phone, but it sucks when you're friends with someone like that because you don't want to just be like, make it all about work and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I never did, but. Yeah. Uh, it does, I mean, a lot of people, especially, I've heard, I've heard lots of positive things about the 120 hertz display and right. smoothness and the and, and all that kind of stuff. Maybe maybe um, we'll find a way to get it on one of our channels yeah. at some point. Um, seems very promising, though. Leo El Primo, $10. Paul, I know it sucks talking about net neutrality, but thank, but thank you. Oh, Do welcome. you guys think it will negatively affect PC building, gaming, and crypto mining? Should I even build a gaming PC? Great content, guys. Uh, Leo, Damn, I mean... It's hard to say. So, the, the negative effect, potential, and this is obviously, you know, a speculative thing. This is something that could happen when it comes to gaming PCs in particular, would be your internet service provider deciding that, hey, we want to segment uh, the pa data packets that you're sending and receiving, and we want to make sure that your you know basic internet stuff is here, and that's what you're paying for. We have decided that we want to create a separate tier for gaming packets. So if you want to communicate with Steam, that's a separate tier. We're going to block that unless you pay for the separate tier of data. Now, we have no idea if that's going to happen or not. It's it it like it it didn't it didn't happen back in 2014, but it maybe was leading towards that. It's something that could happen uh, without rules that are explicitly preventing internet service providers from doing that. They could. And if you happen to be in a situation like about 50 million households in America, in America are, where you only have a single internet service provider that's a, a wired broadband connection that's 25 megabits per second or better, then if your ISP decides to do that, and they're like, hey, you need to now pay us an extra 10 bucks a month for gaming service, yeah, you're kind of SOL right. in whether you got to pay or not game. Yeah. And again... That's a specific scenario, and it may or may not happen, and it's maybe a little bit further out there as far as what could happen in the next few years. But it's, if you look at the way ISPs operate and the yeah. way that they try to make as much money as they possibly can, and if you look at the way that um, you know your basic cable packages have worked for the past definitely 30, possible. 40 years, you can totally see that happening. Absolutely. So, there you go. And but, having full but thank you, and, and, the and we have we that. have tried to discuss this and. Spread as much information as we can. I do have another video, again, that video uh, with Wendell uh, in a few days coming up. So hopefully you guys... Is it like a podcast type of thing? We just... Um, We're just shooting the shit. So, um, back and forth. Brendan Carr, which who, who is one of the, um, one of the five... Uh, mem mem uh, I don't know what the term is. There's five FCC people. Yeah, uh, dudes, members, members, voting voting parties or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the five, and he uh, he's he's very much on the Ajit Pai side of it, where he's tweeting a lot of stuff that's like, "Don't worry, we don't need net neutrality," and like, "We'll just make the ISPs promise to tell people what they're doing and everything yeah. like that." So he's tweeted a very specific uh, list of things uh, which he was calling myth versus fact. Mm -hmm. um, which I found to be very deceptive and very misleading when it yeah. comes to what he was saying. Here's the myth that like they want you to believe, and here's the fact about it, and whatever. And like, all bullshit. Like, lies. Comcast is awesome, and like they've never blocked people and stuff like that. And right. I'm like, actually, a lot of this is bullshit. Yeah, a lot of this is flat very lies. misleading, flat yeah. out lies, yeah. or completely just deceptive Skewed, and that yeah. kind of thing. So, sure. Um, that was kind of the premise of it. So Wendell and I spent. Uh, gosh, my my video is probably a good twenty five to thirty minutes long, and his video is probably a good forty to fifty minutes long. Damn. And we go we went over point by point all of his facts versus myths, and pointed yeah. out actually no, this is the truth. And, yeah. and we talked about a lot of references to a lot of uh, uh, legal proceedings that have gone on in the past 
15 or 20 years. Um, uh, we talked a lot of the, about the details of Title II. Uh, we talked a lot about uh, the details of the 1996 Telecommunications Act and what that was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, a lot of the specific changes and modifications to, um, say, the 1934 Communications Act and the 96 Telecommunications Act to make the regulations fit properly for the Internet. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we tried to give a lot of detail there, and we tried to make sure that everything we discussed had uh, at least one or two articles backing it up you know, uh, to, uh, for research and that kind of thing. So nice. Hopefully, Sounds it's a really resource that in the in in I'm the looking forward to watching it in the week or so leading up to um, the vote on December fourteenth, people can share or uh, with with people who aren't familiar with or people can familiar familiarize himself a little bit more with is it just the two of you talking or are there other it's just me and what me and wendell talking gotcha uh, pretty much yeah nice so and he's he's super smart so well yeah went pretty well we all know that he's okay. probably ai right he's probably <laughs> if, anyone's, if, anyone, if anyone is ai made a, a human better than we could yeah, yeah um and his name true. is wendell so okay great uh thank you very much uh leo el primo next we've got sam mendoza five dollars just upgraded from 8320e to ryzen 1200 thanks to your advice i have a tight budget and want to upgrade from a gtx 964 gig what card would be best honestly huh. from a gtx 960 if you can afford it wait you have a ryzen 1200 right now i would say it'd be kind of wasted on you to go anything beyond like a gtx 1060 six gigabyte model I think that's probably the highest card that I would go with, or an RX 580. Yeah, it wouldn't be a big Personally. enough upgrade because, like, if you did a, a 1063 gig, which you can get would for 200 bucks, enough, yeah, it doesn't seem like Correct. a big enough upgrade for you. So, Correct. hold out for a 1066 gig, which will cost you 260 ish right now. Mm -hmm. Or if you can find, because um, some of the prices for some of the the AMD cards have been coming down, if you can find an RX 580 that's in the 200 50 60 70 80 dollar range be a good pairing for that, that would CPU. also be a, a great a great option too yeah good luck with that man um omar tindell ten dollars i like turtles i do too who doesn't turtles are awesome Fucking love turtles. thank you omar my favorite troll mctrollington Trolly? eight canadiers do you ever get stuck with being out of content when there is no new hardware being around or is on a dead space in marketing Honestly, there's yeah, sure. there's often so much new hardware, at least if you're looking, especially in the last year or so, that the time I have when there's not hardware coming out, I'm so focused on like the projects, the other stuff I wanted to do that wasn't focused around like covering that new hardware coming out that yeah, yeah I always seem to have plenty to do. Yeah. It's I usually guess. it's usually the new hardware that's coming out that detracts me from the other projects that I want to mm. do, to be honest. Um, when big launches come out, I'm like, fuck, I can't do this special, you know, comedy thing or the special, you know, um, sketch or other project, you know, sort of off the handle thing. Um, we're trying, I think we're both trying to stray away from just like review after review, just keep things interesting for us and for you guys. And sometimes like this year has been insane with so many huge launches like silicon launches uh, with CPUs and GPUs from, from all fronts that it's been sort of uh, chaotic and um, we've had to like sort of derail our the, a lot of the content that we that we want to do that we have been planning um, that's more of creative based uh, in place of a lot of like informative type um, just like hard reviews that uh, you know we still enjoy doing but there's been more more of those this happening this year than than since we started our channels I think 2017 has been insane so um, but yeah, we like to keep it flexible. We like to keep both content uh, pieces coming. Uh, next up, we've got Rod, 90265. Again, you, Rod. Again, my father-in-law. $20 for Paul. Awesome show. Awesome show. Thanks, Ronnie. You're, I noticed your half wasn't awesome. <laughs> my half is. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, um, yeah. He, obviously, he can't, he can't obviously I'm it's the tough favorite. It's tough love. It's I'm clearly, the favorite. Clearly tough love he's showing uh, me. Whatever you want to say. Nah. Uh, Righte Righteous Bruce. Righteous Brucey. I have Argentinian just built 1800X fractal with fine C tempered glass 1080 Ti G skill RAM X370 Azrock Fatality Gaming X not posting on XMP 3200 megahertz 2933 perhaps only. Mm. Um, if you're not posting so on that, so it's very much going to depend on your I memory. Good, and I would say. G Skill has quite a few kits that are, com are very compatible with uh, an 1800X, but. 
They are not all the same. Some of them use different actual, uh, the actual RAM chips that they use in there, or of different qualities. You want the Samsung B die chips very specifically. Uh, also, single single rank is typically a little bit more compatible than dual rank. So, uh, I would double check the uh, motherboard compatibility chart for your ASRock Vitality Gaming X. I would make sure that you have your BIOS updated to the latest Ajiza. Yeah. Uh, code for uh, the, the motherboard and the CPU as well. And you need to input your timings and stuff. Your timings yeah. and the voltage of your DDR, your DRAM has to be 1.35. So sometimes... You can manually input all that shit. Sometimes the XMP setting for 3200, um, you know, might not work with AMD, but yeah, loosening up the timings yeah. just to touch might help you out at hitting 3200 but honestly if you're at 2933 over 3200 2933 isn't too bad so i wouldn't i wouldn't be too concerned if you can't actually hit that 3200 speed um yeah yeah but there you go Thank uh, you, Rich, silent please. runner 4292 ten dollars first built pc msi b350 tomahawk ryzen 1300x corsair lpx 3200 2x4 gig kit 800 850 evo 500 gig ssd and a, t a gtx 1050 ti how did i do also kyle when is your black friday benchmarks coming out ah um, Black Friday benchmarks on the system that I built on that day should be coming out shortly. I think it's going to be on float plane probably within a week or two. Um, actually, probably within a week. Uh, so YouTube within two weeks. Cool. Stay tuned for that. Um, as far as your system that you set up, 1300X I is really great. like your system. MTI, very well balanced. You can upgrade your 1300X all the way up to an 1800X. You have fast uh, RAM. You've got fast RAM. Uh, you can upgrade your RAM from 2x4 gigs to 4x4 gigs to giving you 16 gigs, which is... Totally fine for most gaming applications. Awesome and, and SSD, even a little bit beyond that. Gigs, really solid though. SSD, oh, yeah. so no need to upgrade that. You might find that you outlive your 1050 Ti at some point, but again, you have a very solid core system that would easily handle a GPU upgrade as well. So I think you yeah. did a pretty good job there. Yeah, nice job, Silent Runner. Uh, Sebastian Casella, Sebastian. 100 Argentiniers. Um, when I turn on XMP to configure or configure my RAM on my ASUS Strix Z270, it enables sync all cores by default. Should I leave it if I'm not doing any heavy OC on the, on the CPU, which is a 7700K? Also, which mouse are you using, Paul? Um, I, I think you should just leave it at, at all core because that means you, you're overclocking every single core of your CPU. Um, which is what you would, like for in most situations, is what you want to do. So sync all cores is good. Yeah. Um, and what mouse are you using, Paul? Uh, if you're talking about right now, this is a Rocket Nith. Rocket Nith. But honestly, I have a bunch of different mice that are connected to a bunch of different systems that I sort of switch for time. So the, the, this, this is Rocket Nith. I, re I really like this mouse. It's a good one. Uh, over here, I have a Rocket Tyon. I like the Tyon. It's a Tyon back there. Uh, this right here Rocket tile. is a, a Razer Death Adder, um, which is one of my sort of mobile mice that I move around with a lot. I have a Corsair uh, M65 uh, that I really like a lot. Um, what's this? You, you have a wireless... I have a Logitech, uh, Logitech G602 wireless mouse that I use for my laptops. Um, it's fantastic. I love it. The batteries are double A's, but I've only changed them out once in the last year. Maybe two. That's awesome. It's amazing battery life. That's pretty crazy. Very, very precise and low latency sensor as well. Uh, and then in my computer room back there, I have a Mayonix Naos 7000. Oh, so good. I have one of those at home too. It's so comfortable. I really love the ergonomic it's like sex design on your of it hand. and everything. <gasps> yep. Super awesome. So yeah, all those mice I like. They're good mice. Blue, five, seven, nine, 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 five dollars. Hey guys, great show. I just updated my rig with a GTX 1080. What would you guys recommend to upgrade on this PC next? He gave us uh, an Im Imgur link, which I followed and it did not turn up anything except a bunch of Chinese characters. Oh. So I'm honestly not sure exactly what uh, to say there. Interesting. But um, honestly, 1080 is perfectly fine. Whatever CPU you have paired with it. Hopefully it's like, you know, either a uh, a, a Core i7 or Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 on the upper echelon of those. Um, yeah, kind of hard to say without the uh, additional specs there. But thank you very much for the donation. Blue. Thank you, Blue. Uh, and finally, B-I-G Big D DFC for Big the 20 bucks. Thanks, Paul and Kyle, for all your work. I just finished my Ryzen 7 1800X build. I know Paul's taking a look on Twitter. Blue slash Orange Oris build. Keep it up. Oh, yeah. That was a solid build. Look really clean. Nice. I try to like my like with my Twitter 
So I get a lot of people who tweet at me, and, and I, I, I try to respond to them, but um, I, I can't all the time. But I try to go, like, every one to two days, and I just scroll back, like, when I have some time set aside, and I go back as far as I can to anyone who's tweeted at me and respond to them and everything. And, uh, yeah, I love when people send me their builds, because it's, like, often it's like, oh, well, like, you know, you taught me how to build this, and I built it, and that's awesome, or... yeah. Or just like, here's my build and what do you think? And yeah, it's 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 crazy. Like people do really good work on there. So yeah, always happy when people send that over. Word. And then right. uh, I think that's pretty much it for donations. So we can go ahead and read off some of our Johnson shout outs. Yes, indeed. For all of you guys who picked up merchandise. I got a few. China. I got like four. China C for picking up an Evolution China. Heavy Metal Gray shirt. Thank you very much. Uh, John R. from Virginia got John the keycap. Thank you so much, John. Eric Mullins for picking up a CPU cooler shirt and awesome hardware RGB everything shirt. Thank you very much. Josh C. from Oregon. A big old Johnson. I uh, got, got a couple of the thumb screw keycaps and uh, the decal as well. Nice. Uh, we've also Too got mild. Zoo Zoo X from Georgia. All right, that's Zoo. I believe that's how that's pronounced. Zoo. I'm sorry if that's if I'm mispronouncing that, but Zoo X uh, from Georgia got the RGB everything. Ooh, classic Beautiful RGB shirt. everything shirt. Love it. Very well done. Uh, and finally. Finally, Eric M. from New York uh, got the Zero Insertion Force shirt. You're going to love that one, uh, as well as the Thumbscrew Deckle. I wore that one yesterday. Lovely. And Lovely. It. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Woo! Awesome hardware. Do we have a raid? Do we have a Twitch raid for I tonight? I certainly hope so. Let's see. Uh, I did want to give a quick shout out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if it's still there. It may or may not be. Who you got? This was actually from two weeks ago, and Cell put a note, and I don't think we pointed out but uh pete uh who we rated a couple weeks ago uh was raising money for charity he mm -hmm. was at 170 dollars and then we rated him yeah. a couple weeks ago jumped up to 700 bucks nice uh, the awesome oh, awesome hardware community has gone back and he's he was sitting at well over a thousand one thousand ten dollars to finish the month so uh fuck yeah big thanks to all you guys you guys who, are awesome and did that right now though you we're guys gonna raid that. we're gonna, gonna raid Coalition Gaming Crew. Coalition Gaming Crew. Raid the shit out of them. Exactly Just, how it sounds. Exactly how it sounds. Coalition Gaming Crew. So go over there. Uh, raid them. Tell them that we sent you. Uh, give them and, hell. And, and give them hell. They have currently four viewers. Let's make that... We're going to at least double At that. least 400. We're going to at least double that. <laughs> at least... If we're lucky. Twice. Yeah. Now. Raid the shit out of them. I want their minds blown. Tell because me some of you what's guys. up. Uh, thank yeah. you guys so much for watching, watching Awesome Hardware. Of course, uh, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. And if you missed the first half, click the link in the description uh, to check out that on Kyle's channel. Do timestamps uh, for Paul. I've got a ton of videos coming up this week. By the way, guys, uh, I didn't post much this last week, but um, that's because they were pushed to this week. So stay tuned for that. Anyone who wants to do thumb, thumb stamps, we really, really appreciate it. Thumb stamps. Uh, Timestamps. Anyone want to see the timestamps? The drinking. Time stamps. Mike A did them last week, and he's awesome, and we love him. Uh, anyway, uh, everyone go raid, raid Coalition Gaming. We'll see you guys.